Hey. Oh, so you guys are doing it. Okay. And we're back with episode 59 of the Eric and Tony show with our guest, Hormoz Rashidi. Thanks for having Yay. me. Yeah, how's the pause break? Yeah. <laughs> um, and before we started the, the rolling, we are talking about shoes and shit and your, your bootleg uh, mm-hmm. Yeezys. I'm a counterfeit hype beast, is yeah. what I call myself. <laughs> I like I like Supreme, but at yeah. regular unleaded prices. Yeah. These fake Yeezys yeah. uh, were less than $15 That's a pair. That's crazy, dude. Yeah. I do donate to Kanye West's presidential campaign <laughs> for each pair that I buy, because I want the money to go to Kanye. Yeah. Fuck it, but, Yeah, I mean, like, even if you donated, like, $100, it's still fucking... How many hundred dollars cheaper than a regular pair? What does a regular pair of Yeezys cost? Like, these are probably two hundred. Okay. Yeah. That's crazy. It, yeah. I wish they had fucking like counterfeit Chuck Taylors, man. Because like, I have like probably two dozen pairs of Chucks and shit, but like, they'll just start to fall apart. I don't know if they just just because I have a size thirteen foot and like just mm-hmm. the way they bend, it's not. I don't. But they start to fall apart on the sole. Yeah. I've had like the sole fall off. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, this is a legit. They make better chucks now. They're like more expensive chucks too now that are like have a thicker sole and more cushioning and shit too. Because I, I bought a pair of chucks for my girl yeah. for her birthday. She was like, I want chucks. They're men's shoes too, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, they're fucking yeah. the OG and basketball shoe. Yeah. That's anywhere, Julius Erdman like, and shit. Anywhere military chucks, issue too. Yeah. 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 No, no, no. I'm not, I, I don't, I'm not. I don't think that's gay or female or anything. The color you chose, the purple... Bold, right? Question bold, bold, very yeah. bold. Dude. I'm a bold guy, you know. Dude, fucking. Yeah. But, <laughs> but well, I have like I have to rotate them out because like I have some that are getting really little, yeah. little like worse for the wear and shit. So I was like, these obviously I'm not always wearing the purple ones, so I had to fucking yeah. spruce it up. We're all wearing like dark hues, gray, gray. I mean, my it's fall baby. Yeah, and well, yeah. I mean, I, I think the majority of my clothes are all like dark colors. I don't know. I don't really wear vibrant stuff. I haven't done that yet. Dude, mm. the fuck are you talking about? You were like. Super bright blue tank tops that you make yourself and stuff. You this is like the two, tank. the only two things that I have that are like an actual color that aren't like a gray, black, dark green hue. Yeah, I think most guys go to that like color. yeah, you safe. Yeah, yeah. just yeah. a safe color yeah. palette. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and if you're like chubby like me, you go dark. <laughs> just hide <laughs> hide shit better. Yeah, you know, dark's yeah. always a good call. Yeah. Well, that that fell flat real fast. What dark clothes, <laughs> dark clothes and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so what's going on with you? What, what's what's well, we got two shows tonight? We got to fucking keep this on Damn. a tight time frame here. Two shows, yeah. this is a busy I'm man. I'm doing a guest Highly spot requested. at the lab at the improv, and then I've got a spot at the end of the night in the original room at the comedy store. Oh, what's nice. The, what's the end of the night? Uh, the Sunday. end of the night, yeah, it's like just less people, but the people no. who are there <laughs> are like still pretty, but they have like a late, late show now, and that's like goes to like one thirty and shit too. Well, on certain nights, like yeah. on, on Friday, Saturdays, they yeah. do a, a late show in the belly room. Yeah. Uh, but on like a regular night, Friday, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the yeah. original room starts around nine and by around 11 or midnight, that range, people start to leave. Yeah. But the people who stay like the half crowd that stay are like, Really a good crowd. Yeah. I mean, sometimes they suck. The other night yeah. they really sucked too, <laughs> yeah. but sometimes they're really good. So it's pretty good. So did you work at the comedy store as well? I did for like nine years. Okay. I was a door guy for like nine years and then I got passed like a year and a half ago and I just quit immediately as soon as it I got seems passed. like that's the thing. The second people get passed, they're like, and I'm done. Yeah. Like, I mean, a lot of people do that. That's, yeah. the, that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. That's like what the tradition is yeah. but then there's some people who like dragged their feet cuz they just like liked having the yeah the, the guaranteed paycheck yeah cuz it it was stressful like yeah. getting past and quitting my job and then suddenly I was like all right well I'm like past at the comedy store but I'm not working I'm not yeah. a working comic yeah. so I had to like I was driving for Uber Eats and yeah. and doing whatever I could just to make money yeah. while trying to figure out how to get road work and stuff yeah. and then so for, for our like, audience that maybe not isn't familiar with like the passing at stores mm-hmm. and stuff like that, like so what is that and what does that all entail? Like as far as like you, you know your involvement. There so there's and then so the comedy store. It's like a very famous comedy club. Uh, the way the, the the structure of it is is like you come do the open mic, mm-hmm. and if you do good at the open mic, they put you at a better spot on the open mic, and you work, and then eventually they either tell you. That, that you can call in your avails for unpaid spots. You can be an unpaid regular where you're calling in your avails and getting development spots in the belly room mostly. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
or you, you can be a door guy where you you know help seat the room and check people's IDs and that kind of yeah. stuff, mm -hmm. and then you get spots too. And uh, I actually under Tommy the the like talent coordinator okay. back in the day, yeah. he actually I wanted to be a door guy, but he wouldn't make me a door guy, and he said I could call in avails and I was like getting development spots under him and then when he got fired and Adam yeah. got hired as the new he hired me as the first door guy he hired <laughs> and then uh and then I was under Adam for a while but the store was like crazy it yeah. was like packed with all theater acts who are doing arenas now yeah like it was it was like 15 comics like Rogan Diaz yeah Bert Tom Whitney Jesselnick uh yeah. eliza theo yeah. it, it was legit 15 headlining acts yeah. yeah going 15 minutes at a time and i was like i didn't see a spot for myself at that time and then covid hit uh you know people left everybody moved yeah. to austin and stuff a bunch of spots opened up at the store and i feel like that's where i got passed yeah so when you pass that means that they'll pay you to go in and do stand up. So, so, so at first you get past to being like an unpaid regular where you do development spots and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then eventually if, if they think you're close, they'll showcase you where you do a 10 minute spot in the middle of the show. I had to follow Fahim Anwar mm. who, who absolutely murdered. And then I had to follow <laughs> him and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and then, and then you do a showcase. And then if, if you get past, uh, then you start getting 15 minute spots and, uh, and you get your name on the wall. You know, like the name, yeah. the, the comedy store's covered in yeah, yeah. it. You get your name on the wall. So you have your name on the wall over there? Mm -hmm. That's fucking cool, man. Yeah. That's no, like that's a huge, that's thing. a huge thing. That's yeah, like yeah. forever. No, it took, like you're it, like yeah. cemented yeah. in like comedy history and shit. Like, yeah. That's, yeah. Dude, that's like a huge accomplishment. No, it's the biggest thing that's like, that <laughs> happened to me in my life. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, yeah. it's probably the biggest thing that happened to, to any of those people <laughs> on the wall, right? Yeah. I mean, I, mean I wanted it for so long, for so bad. Yeah. So, yeah, fucking and years, it was dope. Yeah. My buddy Matt Billen, who died, got his name on the wall the same time as me. No way. Yeah. So then they'll, they'll pay you, like, what is the pay rate, if you don't mind me asking? Is it like, like 50 bucks 50 bucks in the original okay. room, so. and then it depends on how many tickets are sold in the in the main room. Okay. but uh, And that's like for for perpetuity, like forever? Like the, you can just go there and like get, and perform like how no, many times so, a so, week? Or is there like you so can like perform? So like today, I'm not like I'm not. There's there's way bigger comics than me who get better spots than me. So today what I did is I went to the comedy store at 6 o'clock, and right when the list was put out, I put my name down as a fallout. So it's like the paid regulars who don't have a spot that night can put their name down and be like, hey, if, if somebody doesn't show up, mm, I'm dope. here. Right. And then and then sometimes there's people who already have said I'm not showing up and then you get their spot. Okay. And so that's what happened tonight. Interesting. So that's fucking, well, that's fucking dope. So I had a spot at the improv and then I finagled yeah. my yeah, yeah. self a spot at the... How much do you think that that place... Um, like determines like whether or not like your career goes someplace or doesn't, or do you use other other comedy places to kind of uh, like build build I up think, your career? I think at this point it's just a, a comedy club, and if you if you're in at like if you're in heavy at the Laugh Factory or the Improv or the store or at the Don't Tells or whatever, if you're in at any of the major places where you can get just a lot of stage time, yeah, yeah. then you can get better faster right do those places have like the same criteria where like you have to be no. there for a while or do a door no i think that they're all di everything's different every, different every place it seems like the store like the laugh factory doesn't have development spots mm. and shit that's just no. like a do yeah. you have a following can you put fucking people yeah in the i think that, that's, that's laugh like, factory which is very like haha -ha cafe and like those yeah that type of club vibe and shit like yeah. the improv recently like because i worked there like shit probably like five six years ago and they yeah. didn't have like development spots and then they recently kind of retooled that and started doing that. I'm like, yeah. of course, after I no longer worked there. <laughs> but like, you know, such is the fucking life. But, yeah. Yeah, man. But yeah, it's uh, it's anywhere that you can get a lot of stage time. So yeah. the fact that like, you know, at the comedy store, I can go up at one in the morning or 1230 at night in front of 10 people almost every night. Yeah, in front of ten real audience members yeah, every single awesome. night, Staying and practice out, a joke yeah. or come up yeah, with a absolutely. new joke and try it that night. Yeah, it's just stage time. That's why yeah. I think New York has the best comics is because they get the most stage time. There's yeah. the most clubs, most people packed together in, in yeah. one place in America. So you're gonna. Have you done Vegas at all since like the pandemic? Uh, I just got back from Skankfest okay. in Vegas. 
But have you gone on just to do like the uh, clubs and shit? Because that, that's like blown up. Like, dude, I remember I did Wise Guys maybe like six yeah. months ago, featuring yeah. for Josh Potter. Okay. Um, but and and I've and I go to Skankfest every year, yeah. like the last three years. But like, but what are you trying to do? Like road work and shit. Like that is like a very comparable thing to like Vegas, where there is like. I don't know, 15 different clubs, right? So you have Wise Guys, mm-hmm. you have fucking like... Uh, all the Brad clubs, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then they all have like pretty stocked audiences because they, when you check in, they're like, hey, here's some tickets for a comedy right. show. And so that's so like... No, I they're was, brutal audiences. <laughs> yeah. I, I did Jimmy Kimmel a, a, yeah, a yeah. F- like a few months before that. Like, yeah, no, I've, I... I just forget about Vegas yeah. shows a lot. Like well, now Vegas, that, now that apart the, the, from the, the shows, more, I'm like, oh yeah. How but is dude, the Raiders so there now? It's, it seems like it should be something you go to now. Your fucking yeah. teams there. There's yeah. a lot of fucking clubs and shit. I was going to go to the Raider game when I was there for Skankfest, but just did too much ketamine the night before and couldn't wake up. <laughs> couldn't wake up. pull Matthew Perry on me? <laughs> dude, How is it crazy doing, uh, doing ketamine in a hot tub. Uh, <laughs> I've never done Could ketamine. I yeah. do more ketamine in this hot tub? <laughs> How how is it different doing like a, a Jimmy Kimmel show compared to like an, a normal like stand up set like at Oh no like no not Jimmy Kimmel show Jimmy Kimmel Comedy Club Oh no I wish I did Jimmy Kimmel show <laughs> I'm we'll be coming that. soon <laughs> <laughs> talking new existence Yeah so wait get back to the ketamine thing hmm. I hadn't done it before What the fuck is ketamine yeah, I, yeah. I hear people it's, talk about it's it. a I, horse I tranquilizer idea. Horse it's a tranquilizer. It's not just for horses, but they give it. <laughs> they give it. To, they give it to people. Like paramedics have it for if, like, if your arm gets chopped off and you, they need you to calm down, uh, they give you a shit ton yeah. of ketamine. So it's like taking and, a bunch and, of and Benadryl it's safe. Or Nobody dies. No, you, you don't really die from it. You can die from like drowning, yeah. from, but but it, it's it's pretty <laughs> safe and and it doesn't deplete your dopamine and shit. But it, it, I don't I don't I didn't love it. I did yeah. a little bit. I did a tiny how, amount and it was really fun. How do you even ingest it? Yeah, though? how do you? You just it? snort it. Oh, see now. I'm, so I'm, I snorted I'm a tiny that. amount and it was really fun. And then, what does it feel like? Feels like you're drunk, and everything's kind of like wobbly, uh. but you have c- more control than when you're drunk. Interesting. And then I did a little bit more than that first amount. I did a tiny amount the first time. Pretty fun. Yeah. Did a little bit more than that and it wasn't fun. Okay. So kind of like you're like stone. Or like equivalent of like taking a hit of a joint and then no. like eating like an edible that's like you're way too sound. Like where you're like out of control. No, it's just a bit. such a different drug completely than yeah. weed. And and yeah, no. It, it the a little bit, the tiny amount felt like like drunk, but everything was sideways. Hmm. Like very wobbly and sideways. The the when I did more than that amount, when it was like too much, it felt like there was like a buzzing going on in my head and, and, and I felt <laughs> nauseous. Ugh. And it and it felt horrible. It only lasted like an hour. <laughs> yeah, it felt so, horrible. So, uh, wait, were you straight when you did before you did that? Were you drinking and smoking earlier, mm, or just straight? No, up no, just... no. I'm sober. I don't drink. Oh, okay. Yeah. You smoke uh, weed though. I smoke weed and do acid and do mushrooms okay. and occasionally ketamine. ketamine. Yeah. <laughs> and and maybe every few years Molly, yeah. but I'm sober. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm sober. <laughs> Super sober. I'm uh, mushrooms is something. I'm I Franklin like it, yeah. Village sober. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's where you don't drink, but every other drug is yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I like to do mushrooms again. I think like that's kind of like my thing now with like concerts and shit is like to do mushrooms, go see a show. Exactly. The only thing is, is like sometimes I'm at a concert on mushrooms and I'm like yawning so much, <laughs> and my my shirt is just <laughs> literally soaked from rubbing my eyes yeah. in my shirt, and I'm like, oh, just I should have done acid. Yeah. yeah, you know, acid you don't get the and so you never done acid, acid just right? lasts way longer. But I yeah. like acid better. I feel like sometimes on mushrooms, I go into some dark places in my head. And, and it's like sometimes it's necessary and, yeah. and it's good. But acid, I'm just like having a great time. Really? Shit's melting around me and shit. And it's just fun. Because I feel like that, I don't know, for whatever reason, because it's like synthetic, right? Mm-hmm. Acid. Like I've always had more of like, a, I don't know, more scared of trying that than like fucking mushrooms. Like, it just grows in the, in the ground. It's yeah, but like there's it, stuff that grows in the ground that's that's will kill you too so there's like synthetic and natural stuff that'll both kill you and not kill you but i feel like i can like kind of like you know just remind myself like you took mushrooms and then where ass is just like boom in your face so you're you're on a ride for like a long time like there's no fucking like yeah i mean it's also like do you wanna if you don't what i always say and this is what like i took a class in college it was called drugs in the brain and this is what the professor basically said college you go to berkeley oh and and this better this professor said he was like the the two things that you need to with all hallucinogens the two things you need to like 
really make sure are lined up before you do the hallucinogen is your mental mindset and the setting you're in so set and setting okay and so it's like if like your girl just dumped you or your <laughs> yeah. your uh best friend just died yeah. or killed himself or something like yeah, that just yeah. happened your mindset isn't a good place yeah. to go on a fucking weird trip right yeah, for sure or if you're around people you hate yeah. If you're in an uncomfortable place where you're cold and miserable, yeah. like you're not gonna want to be tripping in into your misery. Yeah. Dude, I had a buddy who was trying to get me to take acid like right after me and my my wife mm -hmm. got a divorce. Mm -hmm. and, like we're gonna go to a concert. He's like, you take acid. I'm like, I don't think this is the proper fucking mm -hmm. set or setting for this. <laughs> no. Like, yeah, you know, the setting might be perfect. <laughs> yeah, the setting at a concert might be perfect, but your mindset yeah. wasn't. Well, Both have to line up. Yeah. I ended up fucking like just. Whittling it down to doing like fucking Molly, and I was like reluctant on that because I'm like, ah, it's all could be fentanyl lace and shit. And I was just like, I again, against my better like in, intuition, like I did it and it was I had a great time. But yeah. I was just like, all right, dude, like there's there's also this thing like post 40, there's like things that I'm like not trying to do. I've never done cocaine, nor do I plan on doing it. And like last year, yeah. during this whole fucking thing, some chicks like we're out drinking, she's like, I'm like, I'm gonna get one more beer. She's like, you, you can't, you've had too much to drink. Unless you want to do some coke, I'm like, no, I'm not going to start doing cocaine. Like 40 years old, going to divorce, and like screams, fucking like. Also, you know. who's starting to do cocaine now after fentanyl? Yeah, right. right. Like, yeah. dude, how much money did the cartel lose putting fentanyl in cocaine? Because I have a lot of friends who used to give all of their money to the cartel. Yeah. They were just, they were just hand over fist throwing their yeah. money, and then they stopped because of fentanyl. Yeah, I think like, that's crazy really when I hear people it. like, yeah. oh, yeah, I went out and did coke last night. And I'm like, that's crazy. Like, you, you're really playing, like, Russian roulette. Because, like... I mean, you can you can test it. You can get fentanyl test kits and... and but and then you're like, yeah. then you're... How crazy is that? Like, hold on. I got to test my fucking yeah. cocaine. And when like, we went to Life like, is Beautiful a few years ago, we, we brought fentanyl test kits and we tested the molly before we did it. And it tested positive for fentanyl. No, no way. way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Damn, dude. See, that's fucking yeah. so we were scary like, shit. Dude, free fentanyl. And then we had <laughs> such a good time, dude. <laughs> you just slumped over. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's no. fucking terrifying. Yeah, just did acid instead. But yeah. yeah. There's no like fentanyl acid test kit thing. Is acid there? is like such a small amount of it already that I don't think you like. You can cut it, yeah. Right. You're cutting it with, like, you're eating the smallest little speck of a thing. Then it's like, if that was all fentanyl, maybe it'd be dangerous. But yeah. even then, like, yeah. it's really, really a small amount. Interesting. When was the last time you did acid? Uh, last week. Yeah. Like two okay. hours ago. Uh, <laughs> last, right now, man. Friday. Yeah. What day is today? Was so, it a regular so day? Did eight, you do something while we, being honest? We're in... Uh, we were at Skankfest in oh, Vegas. Okay. There you go. And, uh, so you had a fucking party weekend then, fucking. Yeah. Yeah, fentanyl. yeah, no, it was like acid the first day, fentanyl, uh, and then fentanyl the second day. <laughs> what is Skankfest? It's a comedy festival that was started by Louis J. Gomez of Legion of Skanks, the podcast. Okay, it's like uh, Dave Smith, Big J. Okerson, and him have a podcast called Legion of Skanks. Yeah, gotcha. And then they made a comedy festival that was. I feel like it was designed to be really comfortable and fun for the comics to chill and like hang out and for the fans to like get to meet the comics and stuff. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So yeah, it's it's like It's in Vegas every year? The first year was in New York, the second year was in Houston, and then I've gone the last 3 years and it's been in Vegas. Yeah. Um I don't know. People are hoping that it'll be in like some like Florida or It's New never Orleans. been in California? It's it hasn't been in California. Interesting. I don't know. Well, maybe I, next year. California would work. It is a good good place for it, but it's just uh, having like one big venue that you could do it in California would probably be expensive. Yeah. And and, and Vegas is just so perfect. Yeah, Vegas lends itself to that kind of shit. Hotels are pretty uh, are a plenty. Flights are yeah. a plenty. There's a he, there's huge place for it that they that they've already mastered. I feel like it's going to be hard to stop doing it in Vegas because anywhere else. You do it in, like, somebody was saying New Orleans, but people are going to get in trouble for drugs yeah. there. Like, it's like Louisiana. Oh, like, yeah. people aren't going to be okay with yeah. people doing, people bring drugs to Skankfest. And, <laughs> right. and There's prostitution there. It's, it's a fucking place yeah. for, you know, yeah. adultery and whatnot. 
Thanks. Man. You ever think of going to like uh, Austin, Texas, or like going to like the mothership and oh, all that sure. shit? For like, sure. is that is that a place that you feel like has kind of like taken away from like? I remember like when you were talking about like you know all those like great comics going yeah. like I would go and you know wait in line with him or go to like shows and we kind of. Probably, yeah. probably you working the door, be like, yeah, just go in there, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I'd be like, oh my God, there's like fucking all these super like huge comics. Yeah, it was just crazy. Like, sitting in the back, like, this is the best fucking night ever. And then, um, you know, now going back there, it doesn't seem to have the same kind of like vibe. Like it's kind of like. No, it's me now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no, yeah. It's like the famous <laughs> comics left, which is great for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, not, right? not, not so great for the fans who want to come and see a bunch of famous guys, but honestly, like the guys who are going up that you've never heard of right now are doing funnier shit really? than the, than the, than most of the superstars because the superstars, I don't know, uh, or, or, or a lot of them, they're, they ha they've already got great specials, but yeah. their new stuff isn't as good. Yeah, you know? I agree you know? with that. I agree with but that. it's like people also just like to see celebrities. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like there's there's a part that's like, oh, that's, yeah. you yeah. know. Like Chris Rock is, I think, the best comic ever, you know, him and Chappelle and Carlin for me. Yeah, for sure. But I'm going off of his first two specials and, and Never Scared too. his third special mm -hmm. is pretty fire too. But then yeah. after that, it's like a steep decline, I feel like. Yeah. Personally, I, I don't love the new stuff. Yeah. I feel George Carlin was just fucking killing it all the way to yeah. the end. All yeah. the way to the end. He just like, even his last thing, I'm like, holy shit, he's so fucking old. Like, how is he even doing but this? But the last one was like less funny and more grumpy. It, you know, it, was, it wasn't the. But, I feel like his peak was the '90s to me. Yeah, I mean, I feel like he's been great from the '60s, '70s, '80s. Yeah. Like he's been consistently great. But man, in the '90s, when like the when like Newt Germs, Gingrich and yeah, shit was, was like, coming yeah, out, yeah. And, and and it was like the culture wars, and then him yeah. popping up. Oh man, and then the stuff from the '90s is like all over TikTok again because yeah. it's like still the same shit. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. It's uh, it, it's like timeless, you know. Yeah, and it's so so true what he was saying. And I I wish he was alive now. Yeah, you know, I think he'd be such a great insight to hear like what he would come up with, what like today's uh, you know I mean, politics I, yeah. and everything, and like what he would have to say. Because yeah, I think he'd say good... we're doomed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, he's saying the same things, but always yeah, yeah, yeah. He's exactly. always saying he'd that. Say, I think he'd be like glad. That we're gonna kill ourselves off at some point. Yeah, you know. But he always yeah. said he's like, I'm not. I'm, I I don't have I don't have a horse in the race. I'm just sitting back and observing, and that's yeah. what makes this comedy great because he's just <laughs> yeah. like subjectively looking at it and just like I don't fucking care. Like you know, I, uh, very very. It's crazy. Powerful. He's fucking been dead for like 17 years already. He died in 2007. Yeah. Well. Yeah, he's fucking awesome. Have you ever seen him live? Mm -mm. Never. No, I wish. Yeah, man. That's when did you start doing stand up? 2009 okay december of 2009 what got yeah. you into comedy carlin i mean i loved carlin i loved rock and Chappelle. i loved stand-up right yeah. cat williams was, I, yeah. I, I loved a lot of stand-up i never thought about possibly doing it as a child or or as like yeah. a young adult and it just didn't seem like a feasible thing. Like yeah. it, I couldn't imagine being a person who could do well, that. You were going to Berkeley, yeah, right. So you did you have like a career that you were like, okay, I'm gonna. I get was a poli sci major. I thought I was gonna go to law school probably or go work in politics or something. And that's what I did. I, I went to D.C. and I worked for the National Iranian American Council, uh, working on K Street, working on Capitol Hill. It was a great job. Like all the people I worked with, the other directors all went on to Ivy League jobs, Ivy League. Like oh, Ivy League schools and then and then jobs like it, it, it was great, but it wasn't what I wanted to do. So what was that moment that you're like, fuck this? And I just remember it, f people had oh, been telling me for years, like, you're funny. You should try stand up, you know, like everybody. Yeah. We, everybody gets that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and and it's like, OK. And then uh, I remember when I was working at NIAC, the uh, in, in, in D.C., one of my coworkers was like, you're really funny. You should do, you should try stand up. And then the beginning of 2009 for like New Year's resolutions, I told my then ex-wife, I said, hey, uh, I think this year I want to try stand up. Uh, and she was like, OK, that's a good that's a good resolution. And I just didn't do anything about it. I ignored it. And then around October, she was like, hey, you said you were going to do stand up this year. Yeah. Here's a joke book. Write some jokes down. Go do an open mic. And uh, so I did. And then I went to this open mic at Sully's in U Street Corridor in D.C. And 
Yeah, I heard. I heard it's like they're they're running like bringer shows now and there or something yeah. like that. But it was a cool open mic when I was there, and it went good. And then I came back and I was like, hey, I want to quit my job. I want to focus on this. I, I don't want to. That's crazy. So you quit your job. So wait, how qu- how soon after the first time you did stand up, you're like, I, I this is what I want to do. Like for, after the first time, no shit. Yeah, okay. after the first time, but and before that, you had ne- you never like did any acting shit. It was mm-hmm. just straight up fucking no way. Yeah, no. Okay. I, I watched a lot of stand up, and especially yeah. before I went up, I was like, I, I analyzed my favorite stand up to be like, how were the jokes structured? How yeah. did they get there? I'm like, oh, okay, okay. So that's yeah. like, and I just like learned how joke structures because just just taught myself basically. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I did six months of just doing open mics in DC maybe going up like three, four times a week because yeah. like, whenever I could, whenever, whenever there was an open mic in the area that I could get up on. And then uh, I moved to New York. I, I I got I convinced my ex-wife who was going to law school to go to NYU Law, and, and we went up there together. She was in law school, and I was just doing mics. Yeah. And then we split uh, at the end of her first year, and I moved to Flatbush, Brooklyn, and lived there for about a year. But the whole time you'd quit your job, so you had like a stable. just going through savings, yeah. So, so just um, running, so run, living through. So it was yeah. a conscious decision. We were like, all right, I'm going all in on this, and then yeah. just kind of like went through savings, pursued it, and then yeah. you pursued it for how many how many years? So I was in New York. I was like six months in DC, then like almost two years in New York, and then I remember it was like November uh, of like 2011, and a really bad storm was about to hit New York. Yeah. Like it was about to be negative degrees and shit. Like yeah. nobody's leaving the house for. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? This might be a good time to move back to LA. You know, yeah. instead of being stuck. Yeah. yeah. Like winter's about to hit, and it seems like it's gonna be a bad one. And I'm running through my savings. I'm like, I might as well just go back to California where it's warmer. Yeah. My family's all there. Mm-hmm. So, so Is your I, family down here, or up upstate. At the time, uh, I had like. A brother in in LA, and and my mom was in Orange County, and my sister okay. was in Orange County. Uh, now my brother's in Temecula, and my mom and sister in Orange County. Okay. But at the at the time, I had my brother here, and I had a bunch of friends from college yeah. here. So it was just like, yeah, it's such an easy place yeah, to come to. Pad, yeah. And then the comedy store, I was like welcomed pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like everybody has dark stories about coming there and people being mean to them, but but mine, Sam Tripoli. I met Sam Tripoli. He was super nice to me. Uh, I asked him if there's somewhere I could smoke weed because I didn't want to be disrespectful and smoke in front yeah. of the place. And he walked me to the back, introduced me to Tony Hinchcliffe and Rick Ingram and and was like, hey, this is Hormos. He's a good guy. Uh, smoke weed with him. And then I <laughs> I had friends. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. It was really cool. Damn, that's fucking crazy that you had no, like... Uh... <coughs> Any like acting or anything leading up, just straight up like mm-hmm. professional job, Berkeley educated to like yeah. I like this is what I want to do now. Like I mean, yeah. Was that prior uh, or like during Mitzi Shore when she was still at the at the? She the, was alive, but but I only saw her once for like the forty fifth anniversary. Okay, they she was like brought or maybe it was the fortieth, but she was brought in uh, via wheelchair real quick, and then she was it was just very quick. But I never got to meet her. Stuff in a wig and shit. <laughs> <laughs> he passes. Yeah. But yeah, no, I never got to meet her. Meet her, like I. But I. It would have been cool. It also, seems really scary. Yeah. Because it's like everybody who worked there. Every time they performed in front of her, it was like you might get fired. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I I hear a lot of stories from other comics on different podcasts that when they talk about her, and I'm like. Well, that's fucking crazy, man. Like I knew somebody like that with that same mentality and the same like everything was the same. And I was yeah. like, I did not like working at the place that I worked at with that person <laughs> with that attitude. And it wasn't like conducive to like right. make anything better. It just made everything worse and your right. anxiety and stress. And I was like, Man, it sounds like so similar that like these people are going through that same thing. I'm like, yeah. but but she's held in such high regard. And I'm like, it's so weird. Like I was like, because fuck pressure that. builds like, builds diamonds too, right? Like it either yeah. breaks people or makes yeah. people fucking crazy good. Yeah, I guess. And so. she, yeah. I don't know. I'm just saying. Maybe, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe. If, yeah. If, if, for, she yeah. also like I think turned away Seinfeld and Louis C.K. and Hamill Burris. I think I heard. Yeah. So it's like she made, you know. 
She's made some some yeah, mistakes but, too. You yeah, know. yeah, yeah. But I mean, because yeah, Lucy K's story about going to the comedy store the first time is like fucking crazy. Because he was already very well established in New York, and he comes out here, and they're like, "No, not not for us." Yeah, but, yeah. And then years later, yeah. he, welcome him back, and then he does a special there. Yeah. Well, again, that was the time like after like Adam came in, mm-hmm. right? When, he, when Adam like fucking took over from Tom, because dude, when, when you first started there. Like the biggest name was Bobby Lee on the fucking market. Right? Well, no, right. when I first started working there was under Adam, where like Rogan oh, and yeah, all okay. those guys came back. But yeah, yeah when but when I first was, was hanging out under Tommy, yeah. it was Delia, yeah, Whitney, Eliza, and Bobby were yeah. the four, yeah, the four people who drew. Bobby an still's there pretty much. Like, yeah, I feel like he's there every week. But but I mean, and and this was Delia and Whitney were the biggest draws at that time, hmm. more than Bob. Bobby's a. a the biggest Bobby and Santino right now in LA, I'd say are the biggest draws. Yeah. Santino's fucking hilarious. Yeah. Well, he's the best. He's Cheese, so funny. Cheeseburger. <laughs> I thought that was such a great fucking stand up, man. Yeah, that was so, so good. good. It was yeah. like, oh, this is fucking hilarious. And like just like not really knowing or following his career. Yeah. I've seen it on Netflix and was like, oh, that's fucking hilarious. Yeah, like, he's great. Good. good job. His other specials are great too. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta He's got a bunch. He did a good crossover. He's a good actor too, man. He's like great actor. Yeah. He was in I'm Dying Up Here. Yeah. Which was not as good as the book. Because the book is like based on real shit yeah. and and they made up characters and stuff. But yeah. it was pretty good. Yeah. The acting was really good. Yeah. Burgetsy is really funny too. And then the other guy from uh uh, yeah. He's like a heavier set guy. He's always on Joe Rogan's podcast when they do like Save the Parks. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Shane Gillis. Shane Gillis, yeah. yeah he's the best. His his stand up was really funny. I thought he did a fucking kill. Usually when people go on SNL, it's kind of like, mm, yeah, you know. Yeah. I thought every one of his skits was so fucking yeah, good. Yeah, he crushed it. I didn't watch yeah. the Nate uh Nate Pergazi one yet the, that came out uh, yesterday, but Oh, I haven't I, heard, I didn't know he hosted it. Yeah, oh, it's, really? yeah, I heard it's like really fucking good. It's like it's really set. dry and like I kind of want to ch- check yeah. that out tonight, but Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah, I love Nate Bargatze. He's so funny. You can't even you don't even notice that he's a clean comic. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. so good. Yeah. So true. But yeah, yeah, and Shane is is like broy Louis C.K. That's that's yeah. actually fucking really well said. It's like he's just such a good writer and so smart, but he's this big like football playing bro. <laughs> yeah. And, and, yeah, and and it's like so and it's just so good. Such a good combo. Yeah, I like watching. Yeah, it's guys. like a George Washington fucking museum story. It's fucking hilarious. That's like a fucking great fucking. <laughs> yeah, bit, man. <laughs> dude, the best is the the, the joke, the first joke of the live from Austin about being the first person to to vote to to say out a, a, an age for uh, age of consent. <laughs> Have you, he's, no. it's, it, he's like he's like uh, it's like a very first. It's on YouTube. Uh, just just watch the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, watch yeah, the beginning yeah. of live from Austin on YouTube. It's yeah. the first bit, and and you can tell that it, it, it's like he did. Two, you could tell from if you watch it. I've, I've watched it a bunch of times. You can tell that there's two tapings that they did. Okay. And, and and if you watch it again, you can see w- that they used like this the the first taping or this or this one taping, and you can see where he was gonna do this age of consent joke. And then this music starts playing from the, the club next door, and he and then he starts riffing on that, and then he never does this joke. So then he takes this one joke from this other set that he did, the other taping, and uses it as the opening joke, and then plays music that that, that says like Shane Gillis live from Austin, and then he comes out and starts it and does that other set that that that, that was missing that one joke. Huh. Interesting. I've just watched it so many times that I. Yeah, that, that I that I noticed where that joke was gonna go. Yeah. yeah. Does he come on LA a lot? I mean, I never really see. Like, it's funny. Like, for Netflix time. is a joke, oh, okay. but I don't think he comes there that yeah. unless he has to. But I don't think he has to for anything. It's like he made yeah. his he made tires and then sold it. Yeah. He's just yeah. I don't think he has to. Yeah. That, tires, I was like a little underwhelmed by that show. Was, that was that was good. No. You didn't like it? Tires? Yeah. Oh, it's so bad. Uh, I was so disappointed. I was like, come on, man. What the yeah, fuck I thought is it was good. this? I didn't think it was like uh, The Office or Arrested yeah. Development, but I watched it. I, 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 did, I did not watch it. I yeah. like, there's shows that I've started watching, and I'm like, that's nah, boring, and I stopped watching it. Yeah. I struggled through it. I was just like, mm. oh, come on. You're better than this, man. Like, I felt mm. like he didn't have like like the creative freedom or, or like he i did. don't know like like he had 100 percent creative freedom really yeah that oh. was his thing he made it and then he sold it like well good on him for selling it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
fucking, yeah. not everything's fucking great. You know? I mean, I can't. Makes, so I haven't fucked everybody. Really everybody short, makes you know turds I mean? every every now yeah. and then, you know. But whatever, good on him. <laughs> Who's your favorite comic like coming up right now? That you don't think has broke yet? Ooh, hasn't broke yet. Comics are so many. Yeah. Like, I do a podcast, Dogs of Brown Town, with uh, Joel Jimenez and Saul Trujillo, and yeah. I think Saul Trujillo is like. I mean, he was like on Variety's top ten comics to watch yeah. and stuff. So, like you know, he's about to break kind of. Yeah. And then, uh, I remember do you know Willie Simon? Simon? Yeah, Willie, Willie Simon, Simon, another great one. Yeah, so yeah. funny. Bruce Gray, yeah, is so funny. Dave Waite is like. Dave Waite. I mean, he's already Dave been on Jimmy Fallon and stuff too. So it's like, is that is that does that mean he's already broken or? You know what I mean? You know, like, or like Fahim like, Anwar has multiple specials, but yeah. he's not as big as he should be. Yeah, like Fahim's like such a monster. Yeah, Rick Ingram is like everybody who comes to the store leaves talking about how good Rick Ingram is, but nobody in the world really knows. Saul's a great one though, man. Because I remember when he first moved here, mm -hmm. like it's interesting, and that's kind of like the thing that sucks is like you know comics that come from a smaller market and they come to LA, like they're fucking posh and like like you coming here from the East Coast, mm -hmm. like you have like a trajectory. Whereas I started stand up here, and I'm like still trying to fucking you know pull myself out of this fucking bucket, and there's like as you know like the just trying to get stage time in LA isn't as yeah. as good as it is in other places. But right. like some like Saul, fucking Lara Bates, uh Carmen Morales, you know right. what I mean? Like you see them come up and yeah. all of a sudden pff, they're on every fucking marquee. I'm like, God damn in, in like yeah. within months. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause they have the fucking polished chops. Yeah. They've been fucking I mean I remember one time uh I was a door guy at the store and I found a phone and and I was ringing to the to the office and it rang. So I picked it up and it was <laughs> Uh, Ron White and he was like no. hey this is Ron White you have my phone and I was like hey what's up it's Hormoz door guy at the store and he's like he's like if I pay you will you bring my phone to me up in the Hollywood Hills and I'm like sure so I drive <laughs> up so I get his address and I drive up to the Hollywood Hills and I and I give him his phone he gives me like a, a few hundred bucks and then he goes you want to come in and smoke some weed and drink some tequila. <laughs> He's sober now, no but way. but I'm like, yeah, yeah and that's the coolest shit. thing that's ever happened to me in my life. <laughs> yeah. So we go inside and and he's showing me his place and we're smoking and shit. That's uh, awesome. And his advice was, uh, move to Texas or move to somewhere. This is before Austin was Austin, yeah. Yeah. but he was like, move to somewhere like Texas, where you can get a lot of stage time. Yeah. In front of nobody that matters and get really good at stand up so that when they see you again here, you blow them out of the water. He's like, that's what I did. He's like, I was getting a lot of stage time in, in the South. Mm -hmm. And then when they needed a replacement for some guy on uh, what, whatever that redneck show yeah. uh, comedy show was, yeah. he's like, he's like, they picked me and. Who remembers anything other than Ron White right. from the Redneck comedy yeah. show? Yeah, yeah. Blue collar comedy. Yeah, blue collar exactly. comedy. Too, yeah. Redneck, blue collar, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> Ron White. And, 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 and yeah. so that was his advice. And it's like Saul did it in yeah. Stockton, Sacramento area. You know, yeah. uh, it is hard to. to I, I feel like if, if I didn't do DC for six months, I don't know if I'd believe in myself. Yeah. Like it's so brutal in New York and it's even more in LA. Yeah, that's got to be like the toughest thing as a comic. You have to do it in front of people. You can't just like practice at home like a musician right. can practice at home. And practicing in front of other comics who aren't paying attention is yeah. brutal too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just like you got to But gotta put in front of other in. comics, if these comics who don't want to see you succeed or don't care to see you succeed or aren't even or in their own world looking at their own jokes and stuff, if you can break through all that and get something out of them, then you're like, oh, these jokes that make it through yeah, that yeah. gauntlet yeah. are really good. Yeah. Is there some jokes that when you're doing that in front of like, you know, both of you guys do a lot of like comedy shows and a lot of times mm -hmm. there are comics in the audience and like, is it you, you gauging like a joke that you're like, oh, this is a killer joke. But like people are, like you said, on their phones or they're not like there to be like enjoying comedy. They're there to like work yeah. you know basically so they're not like a fan or like a fan of comedy they're just kind of like there to, to yeah, get if a joke some doesn't set. get a laugh at, at like a shitty open mic i would just be like well maybe it's not good maybe it is good but i but i said it yeah you know, it's just like practice saying it how many times uh, do you like it, it like work a joke out if you like until you're like okay this is just not fucking working i don't know 
I don't know. I feel like usually I if I if I'm saying something like I think it's funny and I th- and, and 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 I think it'll work out and I'll, and I feel like I figured it I'll figure it out. Yeah. If I'm if I go up there and say it in front of people already, then I I believe in it enough to to, to get enough. it to work. Okay. Uh I don't. I, the worst I, is when you have jokes that are proven jokes. And you're just trying to like fucking you know bring back life or polish them mm-hmm. up, and you do them in a dead room like that. And then you're like, now I'm losing faith in jokes that I know work because these. It's just yeah, but I don't even. I don't even lose faith in those jokes. Like I'll do a joke I know always works in in front of a dead room to see how dead it really is, okay. Okay. right? Because if 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 I tell a new joke yeah. and they don't laugh. And then I don't know. Are they just not laughing at anything? Yeah. It's a new. I I don't know how to gauge it. But if yeah. I tell a joke that always gets a laugh, and then they laugh at that, then I know. Okay, well okay. they will laugh at this thing that always gets a laugh. Yeah. But if they don't laugh at that, I know I'm like, okay, these guys are fu- are, yeah. are are not going to give me anything. Um, how much of the, like your set is like you know because like you have jokes that you and a set list and stuff that you're going through but like so much of stand-up comedy you have to interact with the crowd or there's like all all, Mm -hmm. you know variables like of people saying something or a drunk person and stuff and you can't ignore those things yeah which is like another big like you know uh definitely a harder thing to do than you know uh, like a musician you can just kind of play through that kind of stuff where comic you have to kind of acknowledge the the person in the room or or make fun of it you know like kind of ad lib and ad libbing is like i feel like another like really uh difficult part of being a comic you know i'm not a comic but i when i when i see people do it i'm like damn that's fucking crazy you just came (laughs) up with that like right off the cuff and you like you know and then you focus back on yourself you know it's like it's an art form that in itself you know yeah, no, it's true. It, it's uh, <laughs> it's, it's true like thing. it's it's it is fun, and sometimes it's like you go up there and you like see a guy and you're like, oh, this is gonna be fun, or <laughs> or you know some guys being a piece of shit. You're like, I'm just gonna yeah annihilate this guy. Yeah. Like uh, you can't yeah. ignore it though. Like you have to like like you have to kind of go. Head I've on had sets where it, I've right? not ignored it and I've gone <laughs> in at the person, and then the crowd hated me for being too mean at the person. Oh, really? and then. Like I've had sets where I just completely ignored the person and was just louder than them, so that I drowned them out by by just using my energy to be louder than them. And then at the very end of my set, I did a callback where I talk about how I, I never have a bad thing to say about anybody except for dumb white bitches who talk to me, like whatever you know. Like, and then I hit it with that, and then that way it's like at the very end I yeah, shit yeah. on them so real quick, and just... the audience. Is with me too because they're like, oh, he waited this long. It's not directly at the person. It's 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 like towards whoever it was at this point later on. It's like if you if you go look at somebody and yell at them right to their face, a lot of times the audience will feel bad for them, even though even if they're a piece of shit for for talking. Uh, It's a good move. (laughs) It's funny. Yeah. Um. You found the Diddy thing at all? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's hard to follow because obviously I keep falling asleep after I come, <laughs> and so I don't know. Uh, it's so aroused, yeah. yeah, yeah. But no, yeah. It's like, it's like it seems like to me. I think what's funny is like all the stuff about him abusing Cassie came out years ago. Yeah, and him being abusive towards women came out years ago, and yeah. people were like. Maybe we should cancel this guy. This, this guy seems like a piece yeah. of shit. And then it came out that he was doing gay shit. And that's all. It, it doesn't yeah. seem like it's like that. It seems like it's a lot of gay shit. And people yeah. are like, oh, yeah. oh, well, oh freak offs. He's yeah. gay. Yeah. It's, it's, I think the, the biggest like taboo, like, wait, what? Like record scratch thing is like yeah. the amount of rappers that like have this like street persona that he's fucking for the sake of like, like having a career. And it's just like, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Like. You can't really be hard if you're getting into that. Like, I, I like in that sense where you're, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. The, like the amount of fucking. Dog, like, think about this. Mace. You guys remember Mace, yeah. the rapper? He was the biggest rapper in the world yeah. in the 90s. What did he see made that made him preacher? leave yeah. the top, be at the top of the rap yeah. game? He left to become a minister. Yeah. What kind of freaky <laughs> for shit sure, for sure. did he yeah. see at a Diddy yeah, party absolutely. that made him go, oh, my God, I yeah. need to go find yeah. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I've lost yeah. my yeah. way. And, 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 yeah. and he was only in that for a it's couple of years, right? Mm-hmm. So he's been reworking whatever fucking trauma for, like, decades yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. Same thing with fucking Shine, dude. Shine had some, like, fucking bangers when he came yeah. out. And, like, 
He got that rap. They're saying that maybe fucking J Lo shot the guy. He took the fucking blame. <laughs> like this, all types of crazy ass fucking like conspiracy theories. Yeah, no, no. Shit. Shine took the blame for Diddy. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Apparently, like the yeah. There's a whole bunch of weird shit with that, but I don't know, man. Like the fact. What that, about the the Kid Cudi's car being yeah, blown dude, up? I love Kid Cudi too. And it's like, he's already fucking like kind of on that Kanye shit where he's got mental problems. Yeah. Now you have some fucking dude like trying to murder you because <laughs> yeah. you're fucking like Cassie. And who would fucking turn down Cassie? If she want to go on a date with you, you damn right you'd do that yeah. shit. And then all Cassie was like, so hot. She, she still is hot. She's yeah. so hot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's my screensaver yeah. for like a good two years. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 she came into one of the restaurants I worked and I, I like talked to her for a little bit. And I was just like, oh, man, like, I was like, I probably try to play it off. Like, oh, who are you? <laughs> you from around here? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, it's an exotic name. Never yeah, <laughs> yeah. What do you do out here? She's yeah. like, oh, I'm like, you know, music and stuff. I'm like, oh, my God. At the time, she was, she was so still fucking dating. Like, yeah. Fucking like, I think she would come in with fucking, them yeah. or something. But I was just like, Jesus Christ, you're fucking beautiful. Um, yeah. And then I was like, oh, man, like. Now she's dating a guy who has a mullet and fucking like his. Dude, you had a shot. I know. I was Could've like, been, shit, yeah, man. Yeah. I was like, oh, Could I, was, your I was your up. type. Oh, you're just too scared of getting beat up by fucking Diddy. Yeah, you know, but. but the fact that they say he might also killed his fucking baby mom with Kim Porter and all that kind of shit, like that's mm -hmm. crazy. That's like some mm -hmm. some real fucking like. And then it is outlandish as my sound. It's like, well, why the fuck not? I mean, people fucking take hits on their fucking wives all the time. You have like more money than God. You mm -hmm. know how much of crazy ass shit you got? Fucking blackmail tapes like. Yeah, I wouldn't. Be, I wouldn't put that past you. But yeah. like, I think the next person to come out is going to be J Lo. J Lo's going to have some fucking weird, crazy shit coming out. So I think she's the like, other thing. Think though. about every guy that's ever dated her. That she's been married like a, like thirty times, and everybody fucking divorces her. or She divorces them. Like, what the fuck does she do? Every time I see like Ben Affleck picture oh, of him, he's the, just the like Jesus is, fucking Christ, and like slamming yeah. a door, and like this fucking bitch just shut, doesn't like. So well, she must be like a fucking nightmare behind closed doors. The like reason why those, those two split recently is because Ben Affleck was privy to some of the tapes that were found by the FBI with with some Diddy shit with like J Lo and in some you know. Right, that's what I'm saying. She's fucking probably super crazy and just a nightmare behind closed doors. I mean, she advanced pretty fast through Hollywood, right? From yeah. Fly Girl to, to yeah. movies and shit. So I don't know. I bet she I mean, she is very talented. Right. Like she's I think a I think good yeah, dancer. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, she's so hot and she's like sixty. Yeah. She's attractive, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a talent, I think. Yeah. Is being that, beautiful is a talent. Yeah, yeah. but like you she, haven't she hasn't to do anything except for like I don't know, man. I mean, I don't know, like, that's a talent to me. <laughs> <laughs> to me, her yeah. looking that good at that age is a talent. Her moving around looking like that. She's definitely very uh, talented. Uh, a unique situation for her age and looking <laughs> that way she does. Yeah. I would say I would agree with that. It's very talented. <laughs> like oh, yeah. I as far yeah. as like her ability, what she did, uh, apart from Using that talent to like maybe progress herself in her career, I don't know, and you know, but like it wasn't her voice. Is she the best actress ever? <laughs> no. <laughs> right. no. She's but not. she's not bad. Yeah, she's like as good as any other actress. That's not like the great. Yeah. <laughs> she's yeah. whatever. She's a, a she's like a CW actor. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, she can she can yeah. act in any, a shitty movie or a CW. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she can do that. And is yeah. she the best singer? No. But is she better than like Britney and them? Yeah, for she's the same as that. Yeah, it's yeah. all the same level yeah, shit. Like pop yeah. bullshit. You know? Yeah, Britney's not gonna look that good at her age. I'll tell you. That Hell much. no, dude. <laughs> I don't. I don't think Britney at her peak looks as good as J Lo now. Yeah, J Lo has always been attractive, yeah. but like there's there is that kind of like weird shit. But it's funny because <laughs> J Lo with A Rod and shit. I end up watching some like uh, like baseball clip with fucking uh, who's dude just died? Oh, P Rose. P Rose. Rose. Yeah, it was P R. Rose. R. A Rod and Frank Thomas, Hustle. Thomas, and they're fucking yeah. They were like talking batting techniques and shit like that. And like, I know a minimal amount of baseball. I like baseball a lot. I, I know more stats and fucking weird standings and shit like that than I know the actual like you know technique and play right. Mm -hmm. But like fucking P Rose is talking about like you know getting in the batter's box and shit and so like you know it's really informed. It's like a six minute long video of him like talking about like you know choking on the bat and just like he he was also a switch hitter and shit right. Mm -hmm. And it's like his hitting records are you know phenomenal. But then I'm sitting there watching these three guys. I'm like, this is on like ESPN. I'm like, every one of these guys is like a dirty player though, because fucking like A Rod's got steroid allegations. Fucking mm -hmm. Frank Thomas had fucking like cork bat and fucking Pete Rose bet on fucking baseball. I'm like, why are these guys really talking about? These are like the worst three people. But R.I.P. Yeah. Pete Rose, man, you should have fucking should put him in the Hall of Fame. This is a great documentary on him on Netflix. Fucking awesome. Fuck yeah, he's the shit. 
He's just like a fucking maniac. He's yeah. just like I will win. He bet on his own team, right, right? Exactly. Yeah. He didn't like you could you could bet against your team and then you could rig it so that your team loses. Yeah. yeah. And that's that should be illegal. Yeah. But betting on your own team? Yeah, like, like we're going to fucking well, the win. Like, I'll yeah. bet you will win. Exactly. Like, that, that, yeah. that yeah. should be illegal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that shouldn't a... keep you from yeah. the Hall of Fame, like still holding like all yeah. these records yeah. that no one's even touched. It's like, like yeah. what, why? Plus he was, the guy was like the ultimate like, better. He wasn't like, like that dude was like too sure. Everyone said he wasn't going to fucking like make it. It was yeah. trying to fucking constantly chase that fucking, you know. Yeah, he was like just so nuts and like so much of like had so much drive. Yeah. He was like definitely an underdog. When also, he just put everybody in and and just mention in their plaque. The, the steroids mentioned in his plaque yeah. that he be, that he got in trouble for betting on baseball and that's why he didn't get in until after he died. Right, yeah. like right. If you, if you care about it that much, mention yeah. it. I I think like Bonds and and McGuire and Clemens, all those guys should get in. Yeah, yeah. put them in their own room that's called the steroid era, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and <laughs> yeah. let people walk into the steroid era. Yeah. Well, because there was that's also fun. a cocaine it, era too. You know what I mean? Like people yeah. were fucking like it was still incredible. Like like nobody else. There was many other people that were doing the same thing that didn't right. come anywhere close to that. So it wasn't like it was like unfair. It's like oh, like no, all those guys were fucking doing that shit. Those yeah. are just the guys that got caught, and they happen to also be fucking amazing, like yeah, athletes. Yeah. So like yeah, I, I find that to be interesting. Um, Pete Rose was on like KTLA like two weeks ago. And he did like an interview on there, and he's like, "Yeah, if they don't put me in before I die, I don't ever want to be in there." He's like, "Fuck you guys!" And, and then like, they'll put him in now. Yeah, probably yeah, next year. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. yeah, they'll put him in right away. Yeah, they're like, "It's not about you, dog." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking Pete Rose man, Barry yeah. Bonds, dude. Like back before he got busted for steroids, like there was like a Goodwill that like sold baseball cards and shit when Eric mm-hmm. and I were in high school. And like they was just a loose pack of like cellophane baseball cards, but they had like Barry Bonds rookie cards in there and shit. Like so, I think I don't know how many I have. I probably have like a fucking dozen of them. Yeah, like, we we both just like it was like this old lady working at the Goodwill. Yeah, and okay. she's like, yeah, just do whatever. And so we open up all the packs and like just go cherry through, picking all the fucking take all like the good, good cards, eighty five, yeah. you know, cards and shit. And like, yeah, thanks, Grandma. Yeah, like, oh, five you bucks kids? for yeah. fucking twenty five like Barry Bonds rookie cards and yeah. shit. And like, <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> just kind of went down after he got busted for fucking roids, but man, like another fucking good baseball player. Yeah, yeah, man. You're like the Yeezy of baseball cards now. <laughs> <laughs> Discount bootleg. Yeah. Fuck, man. Well, you got to get the fuck out of here. Huh? What time is it? Eight thirty. I do. Dude, yeah. Thanks Dude, for having Cinderella me. ready for the ball here. <laughs> um, anything you want to plug your uh, Instagram shows? Your website? Uh, what's what's going on? With you? Yeah. Uh, at Hormos Comedy. Uh, it's my new Instagram handle. I also have at not hormones. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to be at hormones, but a trans therapy doctor beat me to it. So, I'm, so I was at not hormones, but then I said something pro Palestine, and uh, so so that account got <laughs> got shadow banned. So I'm trying a new account. At hormones comedy, uh, dirty at ten thirty at the comedy store, first Wednesday of every month. Uh, uh, and at Edmonton, Canada, I'll be there. Uh, end of this month right, sweet thank you for coming on the podcast yeah, thanks, thanks for, for having me guys podcast, man. Yeah. so fun yeah appreciate uh, you you can find me at, at Tony Klein Comedian uh, on Instagram uh, TonyKleinComedian.com that's my website Eric um, find me on this podcast uh, you can also go to the EricAndTonyShow.com buy like a t-shirt and a mug and shit to help support the channel I can go to YouTube uh, every Monday we'll, we post the full episode uh, every Monday to watch the video for it and then Spotify every Monday as well listen to the audio and then every day we post 60 second clips on Instagram, YouTube and TikTok of our featured guests so I'll be blowing you up in your DMs and tagging you as a uh, creator and all that shit so cool. both accounts is one all, shadow band. Uh, yeah, and all the accounts bring you back so. out of the shadows <laughs> so yeah so thanks again for coming on thanks the podcast thanks for having me appreciate Doug appreciate it man appreciate you guys yeah. cool. peace peace